welcome to the rainbow flower cake tutorial as you can see I've got my sunglasses on because it is so bright this cake um, we have colored the batter in fact I'm going to take my sunglasses off now we've colored up our batter in really really bright food paste colors um, we've used sugar flare colors um, and don't be shy with them lots and lots of uh, food coloring we've actually tested out the cakes and they don't taste the food coloring at all they taste lovely so lots of food coloring color it up to the um, to the color that you actually want your end sponges to be stick them in the oven we did these in sandwich tins stick them in the oven don't worry when they come out that they look like normal cakes because once we've taken the tops off these I've left one just to show you um, you will be literally blinded by the color okay so once you've done that we're going to layer them all up with some buttercream and then we're going to colour up these beautiful flowers. You can use whatever cutters, moulds, whatever you like, but just make sure that they're beautifully cut out and really, really bright. Okay, so let's get cracking. You can also see that I had some um, cake mix left over, so I've baked these really gorgeous cupcakes, and you can have so much fun with the colours. Obviously, we've uh, co colour coordinated the cupcake cases with the flowers, and then use coordinating colours on the top. So I think they look fantastic, and they're definitely going to brighten up any rainy day. Okay. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to level out this last sponge. These are all exactly the same height. This is really important with a rainbow cake because there's nothing worse than cutting into it, expecting something really professional and they're all different depths. Don't like that look. Um, the way that you get them all the same depth is by using this ingenious little tool. It's called a cake leveler. It's got little nicks down each side and you basically decide what depth you want each of your sponge layers to be and then you cut straight across using it's almost like a cheese wire um, have a little practice with it beforehand um, and you get yourself some evenly sliced cakes so it's fantastic so I've chosen uh, it's number four notch on either side straight down like this make sure that you're keeping this on the work ball that's really important because if you don't keep it on the work ball then obviously you're not going to have a nice straight cake or level cake okay so that action is sort of soaring and pushing all at the same time yeah do it side to side don't do it back to front it's really hard to do it back to front like that so make sure you do it side to side now have you got your sunglasses on are you ready for the unveiling there we go orange cake it's amazing isn't it that we've got a nice brown sponge on the top but when we take it off that's where the color is so really important this part must be done otherwise you cut into your cake and you've got all brown bits and it doesn't look very nice now, another thing we have to do is turn over because of course we've got brown on the underside as well which is no good so we have to do the same thing now all we're doing over the next uh, over the um bottom one is just shaving the top off don't really want to take any height off the sponge I'm literally just taking the brown covering off okay so if I just literally look, just shave the top off that's come out quite well actually if it hasn't and you have still got some brown bits can you see I'm just using this little almost like a grating action just to take off all the brown bits now if you're really ultra fussy you could go around the outside can you see that I've got brown around the outside but you know what life's too short I'm not doing that and actually when you cut into it you can't see that bit because you've got all the decoration around the side anyway okay so there is my cake you'll probably notice that this side I've got quite a close knit bake and the other side I've got quite an open bake but we really won't worry about that and then we put that on top of there and I've got my five layers and I think five layers is a perfect amount it's a really nice gives you a nice deep cake but not too much so I've got a red yellow orange blue and green okay have a little tidy up this is my tidy up scoot it all to one side okay because we're doing such a bright cake here we want a nice bright board Cake Craft World do some amazing colour boards. I decided to use green today, but they do them in all different bright colours um, and it really sets off the cake perfectly. I've got some freshly made buttercream here. Um, you want to use quite soft buttercream purely because we're putting it on sponge and if you use hard buttercream, you know what it's like sometimes the crumbs come back, um, back 
back at you uh, um, on the palette knife you don't want that so we want it to be um, a little bit softer than normal now the hardest thing is to choose which colors are going where so let's make that decision now a little bit of buttercream on the board and that's just to secure I'm going to go with my green first of all I've decided okay now because we've got so many layers going on here we don't want big thick um, layers of buttercream as well okay so we really want to keep the buttercream oh, wants to move around to a minimum so just a scraping over the top now how to keep the breadcrumbs of uh, the, the sponge crumbs from coming up is to make sure that you've always got your buttercream your palette knife full of buttercream because the only time the sponge is going to come off the cake is if actually you're just doing this across your sponge with no buttercream because what you're supposed to be doing is spreading the buttercream on there not taking it off okay so that's our first layer I'm going to go with my yellow one next make sure they're going on straight don't want a leaning tower of rainbow pizza again make sure that we're spreading the buttercream on and not pulling the sponge off a little bit of cake crumb in there but I'm sure it won't kill us there okay for a second layer next one I'm going to go with yellow okay okay um, let's go with blue I'm looking over the top of the cake to make sure that it's not all wibbly wobbly and that's absolutely fine more buttercream this is going to be a monster of a cake okay last layer is our red it's the reddest sponge I've ever seen great okay so now what we're going to do on the top buttercream over the top even thinner amount than we had before because remember this is actually just to coat the whole of the cake and it's going to come down the sides as well because what this is going to do is it's going to help us to stick our flowers to the side as well okay so over the top and then load up your palette knife with your buttercream now we don't need any design awards around the outside here because remember it's going to be absolutely covered with all of our stunning flowers but just make sure you get yourself a nice covering of buttercream all the way around the outside after you've covered it all round maybe stick it in the fridge for about 20 minutes and let it sort of harden up a little bit and then come back and then we'll put another layer of buttercream around the outside ready for the flowers to go on my cake's out of the fridge and I've skimmed it again with buttercream just to make, the, uh, make it sticky again and now I'm going to get cracking with my flowers now I've taken a whole collection of colours from the Satina Intense range because I find them really really good colours and you don't have to add any extra food colouring to them and they're also um, it's, um, it's a really nice consistency Satina to use these little ingenious cutters and moulds with you don't have to add any CMC or modelling paste or anything to them um, these are made by Blossom Art and they are a cutter and a mould and it comes as a set 
Um, they're absolutely fantastic and the good thing about them is is that I can cut them now and I can put them straight onto my cake. I don't even have to leave them to dry and that's really good because I can sort of mould them and shape them so that there's no gaps in between my, my flowers. You'll probably notice that the cake that I did beforehand, I did them in rows of colours to match the layers of the sponge inside but actually I'm going to just mix it and mash it up today so we're going to have all different sorts of colours all over the place. So I'm going to show you how to use these cutters and moulds. I've, I've rolled out my icing um, to about two millimetres thick and I have just left them. It's okay to leave them out like this because actually because we want them to go on the cake we like them to just get like a little shell on them. It just makes them hold their shape a little bit better. Now let me start with, uh, I'm going to start with the pink I think. So take any shapes that you want. I'm going to start with the petunia cutter. So I'm going to press down, give it a little rub just to make sure that all of the corners, all of the edges, um, they don't have any frays on them or anything. Um, and I'm going to put this in this little mould like that and really, really gently press down and release. And as you can see, it makes the most perfect little petunia which can then be stuck onto our cake. Okay. Now onto our hydrangea. Now you'll probably notice that I've never seen a bright green hydrangea, but this is a fantasy cake. It doesn't matter. We're not following, um, following what cutters we're using with the certain colours. And in fact, you can use any cutters that you've got um, in your cake decorating box for this cake. If you haven't got these Blossom Art cutters and you don't want to invest in them, you might have a Blossom plunger cutter at home, but this will work just as well. So press down, give it a little rub, as I say, to make sure there's no little furry bits on the ends, and then just plunge directly onto your cake. So I'm going to continue all the way around my cake until I get to the other side. This cake is really easy but quite time consuming. So grab whoever you can to give you a hand. I've got the boss. Wow, that was a marathon flower making session but we've just about finished. And I've got Lynn here because she's desperate to see what it looks like inside. It so, actually didn't take too long. No, it doesn't take too long. No. And actually, it's one of those things that if you've got a cup of tea and you need to have a chat, honestly, it gets done really, really quickly. So we've done lots of tea making, lots of chatting, and we're done. I think it took about done. 20 minutes. Yeah, mm. about 20 yeah. minutes all in all. Just make sure that you've got plenty of sugar paste rolled out because that's what takes the time is keep running out of sugar paste. So make sure you've got plenty. But here is the moment of truth. We're going to cut this cake. I'm going to put my sunglasses on because it's going to be really, really bright. I'm going to go right down. Oh my goodness. This is one mammoth portion of cake. <laughs> Ready? Yeah, go on. Oh my goodness. <laughs> wow, that is what we call a rainbow cake. That's also what I call a good portion. Yeah, that's brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. Look at that. So it really does work. Yeah. Um, if you don't want um, something so bright, I'm just going to bring into the shot here. This is what we call an ombre cake. An ombre cake is one colour and just different intensity. So we've started off dark and gone much, um, much paler at the top and basically done exactly the same thing again with the, um, with the decoration. So this is really nice even for a wedding cake as well. So we've gone from one extreme here, really, really bright and bold to actually um, quite pale and sophisticated. Um, and as I say, make up some cupcakes as well because they look really really fun and thank you for watching and i think we're going to get busy tucking amazing. in yeah see you soon bye